I'm Mike Russell. Joining us is Congressman Andy Biggs, live from Washington, D.C. Thanks for being here, Congressman. Let's start with uh, the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has a Supreme leak, apparently, uh, and it seems to be missing in all of this dust up over the cable media that uh, that this has never happened before, and it is a very dangerous uh, uh, thing that's being ignored, right? I mean, this is this is a big deal. It's huge because it, uh, it undermines the U.S. Supreme Court uh, in the eyes of the American people. So that's that's one thing. Now, they've managed to do that with some crazy rulings over time, but, but by and large, most Americans thought they were doing okay. But the reality is um, the trust has got to have been eroded within the court itself because what happens normally is, you know, you've got someone's putting a draft out, and people who agree are going to vote for that, they're reviewing the draft, and then they're circulating it amongst the others because they're going to have to write a response to it, etc. So somebody... Somebody decided that they wanted to create unrest in America to put pressure on these justices. Uh, maybe it was even to distract against, uh, you know, as, as to the Biden administration's record, all in a midterm election year. Uh, there's, some, there's some heavy ramifications that go with this. You brought up trust, Congressman. Congressman Andy Biggs with us, and I think that is the biggest issue. I mean, we had two years where the CDC, the FDA, the trust in, in both of those institutions has, in my opinion, been shattered. The whole public policy health official status is questionable. Now you have the Supreme Court. You got wokeness in the military. How do you as a congressman and how do you get your other Congress people to restore trust? How can we do that? I mean, I think the only thing to do is tell the truth about everything we know when it comes to COVID, the policies, the pandemic, and find whoever leaked this and find out why. Yeah, I, I do believe that uh, accountability and transparency really are the uh, the way you restore trust. I mean, trust trust really is, you know, Gosar says this all the time, trust is a series of promises kept. And um, right now we're seeing promises broken. We're seeing the weaponization of every uh, branch of the government in ways like we've never seen before. And I think that that uh, we, we're breeding uh, uh, right now a country of cynics. Yeah, I think you're dead right on party that. Party two over here, Congressman. Yeah, yeah, party yeah, two right here. Yeah, you got, you got a couple <laughs> couple of cynics right here. Um, I, what do you think today? The the president of the United States of America said the MAGA crowd is the most extreme political organization that's existed in American history. Corrected himself and said in recent. American history. This seems to be a talking point that is uh, unified. Is that it didn't only come from the president today? A few talking heads on cable are starting to parrot it as well. Yeah, I don't. You know, uh, we we actually had a rev uh, civil war in this country, um, and we also had uh, communists uh, infiltrate the country and actually give uh, uh, nuclear weaponry to the Soviets. I don't know that I would say necessarily uh, we've got the most radical of anything right now we we have a lot of extremes um but uh, also there's a lot of rhetoric coming from the biden administration and the leftist camp that anybody that doesn't adhere to their orthodoxy their view of what the orthodox uh, uh way of life should be they're going to be branded uh, super radical and that's kind of where uh where these guys have gotten to it's uh, everybody is radical unless you agree with them I want to bring in President Biden here for a moment and, and switch gears to Ukraine, Russia, because it, it seems to me that one of the things that Biden is trying to do to distance himself from what you guys were just talking about in the progressive agenda, the bad economy, the inflation, the interest rate hike that the Fed put in today is by trying to shore up his war bona fides. All I look at it, though, again, as a cynic, <laughs> is we're cheering on more human suffering. I don't know what I think America's exact role should be, but I do know that a good portion of Ukraine has left probably to never come back. There's billions of dollars in damage. Putin hasn't given up yet. So if you are assessing the Biden administration's role in that, what do you think that it is? Am I off base? Well, I think the Biden administration could have prevented this from happening. And so I, I, I've said that numerous times, so I'll leave that alone. But I, what I think America's role is as the leader of the free world, or what we once were the leader of the free world, is to encourage peace, encourage peace throughout the world. 
And uh, when you see Pelosi, and I, I know you want to talk Biden, but I got to talk Pelosi and Schiff going to to Ukraine and basically uh, issuing bellicose statements that um, that I find myself saying, well, you know what? You're not pushing your peace on anybody. You're not inspiring peace. You're inspiring long term generational war. Um, shortly after you screwed up the twenty, uh, the retreat from the twenty year ro- ro- war in Afghanistan, and I, I think we should be talking as an Americans about how in the world do we encourage peace in the world? And uh, uh, you know, Noam Chomsky, for Pete's sakes, that that uh, that uber leftist now teaching at the U of A part time, wow. he said there's only one prominent leader in the in, in the nation that's talking about trying to resolve the differences the war in Ukraine, Russia, through peace, and that's Donald Trump. And he's right. And, and, and this administration, and quite frankly, a lot on even our side of the aisle, they, they want to look at, at war as the answer, long-term war as the answer. And I am, I am very concerned about the move towards uh, inching towards a general war over there. It seems to me, Congressman Andy Biggs joining us, and uh, if you got to get in a car, you don't want to miss it, obviously jump on your uh, smartphone. You can just find us right on the app, uh, on the iHeart app. So uh, President Zelensky's actually uh, was on special report with Brett Baer today. He's been at the Oscars. He's been at the Emmys. He, these, these photo ops with, with politicians. I'm see, I There's so much propaganda coming out of this. I don't know which way's up. I believe, I understand, and I agree with you that this is going to be a, a very long battle, a very long war. Um, but I don't know which way is up with all of the cable news and propaganda that I'm seeing. Uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, look, uh, even with the briefings that we get in Congress, um, we go out and it, it, it seems like it's different information, um, even from the next week, the next time we get a briefing. So uh, the propaganda goes uh, from each side. Each side's putting out propaganda. And I remember the, uh, I can't remember who said it, but they said the first casualty of war is the truth. And uh, that seems to be a major casualty in this, in this instance. So Congressman Andy Biggs. Are there reasons for optimism? If so, what are they? We like to end uh, on a little happy oh, note okay. here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my, my view of optimism is this. Is, is, is Number one, I think this country was founded under the hand of God, and I don't think that, that, that he really necessarily – he's going to let us govern. But uh, if, we, if we really embrace the documents and the freedoms of the Constitution itself – I think we, we, we survive and, and grow. The other thing, too, is I'll tell you, I am, I am supercharged optimistic about the American people having an awakening right now. That's what's happening. They are waking up to their, their our awful situation. We are actually going to hold people accountable through the election process. I believe, people, I believe state legislatures are trying to change and make sure that we have election integrity. So we have a fair process and transparent process. And if that happens, then I think you're going to see a change, at least in the uh, con- congressional and probably in Arizona, a little stronger uh, uh, legislative uh, condition. And if that's the case, there's reason for optimism. I love reason for optimism. Congressman Andy Biggs, always appreciate your time. Always appreciate you stopping by and kind of pulling back the curtain on what's going on in Washington.